each member, the mayor I saw out there, um, and the folks on James Island. We're proud to be here, happy to be helping out, providing a, a way that we can help you be safe. And what the men and women do, the fire department, my hats off to them. Um, we all need to be grateful for that. We, as uh, Dave said, Ryan and I do uh, a lot of work in the fire department and uh, first responders and um, what these folks do every day behind the scenes is really important. You're sitting on one of the highest pieces of ground on James Island. That's why there's a fire station here most likely, but it's also what they use as a staging point when there is a hurricane or an activation. You see the apparatus parked across the street, but this site is high ground. So it's important to have a station here. Um, being on the corner, it's also important that they have good views. The trucks are safe, cars are safe when they're coming in and leaving. Um, don't know how many of you saw on the Nightly News channel on the NBC News about a month ago, there was a, a feature on cancer rates in the fire service through PPE, but also the things we've learned about the design of fire stations and how we can design the buildings to keep their cancer rates down. Those are the types of things that are important. And when you're in a building like this, you're in a garage, no disrespect to the department or the CFD, but this building really does not serve as a tool or an apparatus for the department to properly protect the men and women that protect us. And so when you walk around and you see the living conditions, that's important, but it's also the way we can design this building to help keep them safe. And so that's what our goal is. Um, what you'll see on the boards are They'll look like floor plans, they'll look like a building. Remember, we're just in conceptual design right now, so they're really just sketches, they're ideas. None of them are meant to be a final building or a final design. The hope that we have is that with your comments, some folks might say, I like this part of option one or this part of option three, and we're going to sort of take all of those comments and those will then morph into additional options that we can continue to analyze. Part of that involves the site that we're on, the site that the PSD owns, or the larger site that incorporates the um, adjacent building in the corner and how it addresses the traffic light. And uh, all of those things are important when you design a station because when the trucks leave, we're going to have to worry about maintaining the traffic light and signalization and making sure it's safe for folks driving as well. Um, Ryan, I don't know if there's anything you want to add. Uh, as, as Steve really hit a lot on the head there that you know our office and our firm has really I would say fire stations are really mission critical architecture pretty much the buildings that need to survive during uh, true disasters are really our specialty and really you know kind of what at least me speaking personally is what I'm I've been striving to really perfect uh, during my time here and this is just another one of those projects and I'm actually Really looking forward to uh, continue working with the PSD and really giving the community here uh, a good working station that more importantly functions for the firemen and for the people in town. Well, I'll add that um, my office is on James Island. My daughter, uh, older daughter, graduated from James Island Charter High School. We, we understand James Island. We believe in what happens here. Our office is literally right up the road. Um, and it's just an honor to be working for you and working for the PSD. Thank you. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over to, to Fire Chief Blick. Uh, he's coming up on 43 years of service with the JIPSD. And so uh, 15 years, right? 15 years of that service was here at Fire Station 2, where he was stationed. So he has a very intimate knowledge of Fire Station 2. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to the Chief. Thank you, Luch. Mr. Schaefer, and uh, thanks for everybody being here. I'm just going to give you a little history on the building and why we need a fire station. Um, a little history about me. Yes, I've been here almost 43 years. I live right down on Burnett Drive in Clearview. I came over on James Island when I was sixth grade, went to Harbor View, then went to Fort Johnson. Go Trojan. All right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, most of my life's been spent over here on James Island, and most, um, of course, my whole career has been right here on James Island. Great place to live. I don't live here anymore, but uh, the 38 years I lived here was great, and uh, 
just want to see good things for James Allen. That's why I'm here, and I think I signed myself up for about 10 more becoming a fire chief. So I plan to be here. But what you hear is, is uh, the importance about us being here and talking about this fire station. It was built in 1964. It housed one person, and it housed the 1964 Ford F-800 fire truck. That fire truck ran out of the adjoining room here. So when you walked into the kitchen area on that building there, that was the day room, the kitchen, and the bedroom was in the back. And then that was the bay. This was not here. That stayed like that when I came here in 1979 in the fire department. We finally got two people in here. Still was running that 1964 Ford F-800 out of here. I rode tailboard on that truck out of this fire station. And um, eventually, as time came along, and you know, the times fire trucks built, you look at those fire trucks now, they're a lot bigger than what we used to have back in the day. And we had to do something about this building. We've uh, remodeled three times. The last one was 1986 when we added this bay right here, as we had to accommodate the larger fire truck. So with that, we also increased staffing because we used to have a spare unit, a van, a service truck that used to run out of the fire station with the engines when they went out and they had extra equipment that we needed on scene. In time, you know, we start moving into the 2000s and like staffing is critical in the fire departments. There's minimum staffing requirements to meet NFPA. There's uh, standards for uh, the, the building itself. So in time, we've been forced to look at the building and determine like, okay, it's time to do something. One, it's it's not very good looking building sitting on Harbor View Road. <clears throat> it's just not. And now it's time to do something with this place. So as I said, we need to provide adequate living and workspace for the employees. This is not adequate anymore. As I spoke about staffing issues, NFPA requires minimum four people on a fire truck. It's tight with four people in this building. You heard in the conversation about storms. Well, we, we bring in extra crews into all the fire stations during storms and man those fire stations with additional personnel. There's no room for additional personnel. We go out and buy air mattresses and people sleep on the floor in the living room or they sleep in the bay or wherever they can find. It's not appropriate, it's not, it's not healthy, and um, we gotta do something. We need a facility that's modern, advanced, aesthetically pleasing, and will serve the community for another 60 years. All right, we've gone through decades with Band-Aids to remain in this outdated facility and continue to provide the best fire and EMS service to the coverage area of Station 2, and we relocated from this facility numerous times due to renovation, uh, backup sewer problems, and all we did is threw a band-aid at it to, you know, allow people to be here and continue serving the public. Uh, the times have changed from protected tomato fields in 1964 over here to high dollar commercial and home. Everything out here is big money. And we need to have a fire station that can adequately serve you as the citizens of James Island and get the best service you can get. And we need a facility to keep those trucks running out and to keep the men and women in the fire service healthy and ready to respond. In addition, the Harborview Road widening, people who are familiar with James Island and drove up and down Harborview Road. We all know what that Harborview Road widening project did. And one thing it did significantly that hurt the service out of this building is they took up part of our property to put that turn lane in at this light. So when the fire truck comes out, for the safety of the public and the traveling community, when that truck gets out, it's in the sidewalk for people walking down before they can get out of the bay and put the bay door and secure the facility. And they're in the road. That's not good. We don't need that. And um, so another thing about this site, we presently have a favor, favorable 
the construction of a new fire station is an important to the strategic high ground, which we talked about before. This is high ground on James Island right here. You know, we don't want to inconvenience nobody with, you know, possibility of purchasing land or asking people to move or whatever. But this, uh, this piece of property is critical to the fire service and the community to keep the fire station operational door, during storms. The highest land over here, and we need to stay here. What this means also that it presents a location that the fire department can best um, provide the service within the service area of six minutes. So if we move the fire station, that can mess things up on how we respond to areas, and it affects the uh, ISO rating schedule, we are graded. Every fire department in the country is graded for insurance purposes. And we are a class one fire department. It's a class one or a class 10. The lower it is, the best it is. Y'all got the best uh, fire insurance rating over here. It keeps your rates low. If we go from a one because we can't replace a fire station and we go to a two or a three, you as a taxpayer will feel that in the long run. And just to like, you know, chime on it or, you know, put a feather in our hat. Out of 40,000 fire departments nationwide, we are one of 411 in this country rated as a class one fire department. We don't want to do anything to hurt that class one rating. And there's a lot to it, and I'm not going to go any more in that, but, you know, it's, it's a benefit to the taxpayer that we remain a class one. All right? So in closing, feel free to walk through the facility this evening, take a glimpse of the challenges we face in the present facility, and thank you for coming and showing an interest in our potential endeavor of replacing fire two, fire station two. Yes, ma'am. And so that's, that's why we're going through this process, is to be able to understand you go from conceptual design to schematic design. So schematic design actually produces the construction documents to be able to go to the contractors and say, this is what we want you to build us. How much does it cost to do that? So uh, Rose and Bloom Co., they're going to use a third-party cost estimator. And they're going to come back on the 10th and have an estimate, but until we actually open the bids, we're not going to know what that's going to cost. And so we have to be very specific with the technicalities of what it is we want a contractor to build for them to translate that into a price. And so that, honestly, schematic design, that could be another 8 to 10 months. Then you have to bid it out. Then you get the sealed bids back, and you open those bids. We could be here next year, around this time, and that's when we'll really know what that cost would be. And hopefully, we're seeing some, some downward um, in the actual materials. Construction materials have been sky high. The lead time to get the components to actually put a station together have, have been very long. And so what we want to be able to do, and, and hopefully, as we work through this process, some of those materials might go down. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. It might go up. But to really get a contractor to say, okay, we've read your bid. This is what it's going to cost. Again, we're bound to go through a public process and have everybody competitively bid so that we make sure we're getting the best bang for the buck for the taxpayers. We're required to do that. Uh, just quick question. Are you looking... You look more towards local builders or out of town builders, or does that matter? Uh, we're we're looking for the uh, the the lowest and best. I can tell you that, and we will have criteria in that bid when we go out as far as how we're going to grade those. I'm glad you're doing it. I've been in and out of a lot of buildings. It smells like there's mold. There's something going on. Well, in it's, not it's not mold. Good. We've had the station check, but it does have a funky smell. I've mm. sitting on that night here, and I yeah. say it every day. I don't know what it is, yeah. but it hasn't killed anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, ma'am. Um, on these schematic 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 sch
So right now we're still in conceptual. Option two out there shows the, uh, the bunks going back and uh, the dentist's office to remain, but there would, there would obviously have to be uh, you know, easements and shared parking and, and we would have to you know, go through that process. Um, right now, this, this square footage is just, it's not um, adequate. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just wondering if you're going that way. I mean, are they leaning towards going that way? Are there, you all leaning going that way? The, there's, an option, there's an option to be able to keep the dentist's office, and then there's two right now that we would have to negotiate relocation. And we've, we've been transparent with the dentist throughout. Okay, but that will add to the cost of the of the building to the overall cost of the project that is correct uh good way at least one if not all the scenarios involved building on this exact footprint what would be the plan for providing services during the construction period we'd have to cross that bridge we've uh in the past when we had issues here in this fire station and we had to leave we stayed at the city fire station seven at uh Fort Johnson and Camp Road for four months till they did some refurbing here. That could be an option. We may be able to find a location where we could put up, get a trailer in, put a tent up to protect the truck. I mean, we're going to just have to figure that all out in the long run. But that, you know, it's there, there's a couple of options available to us. Maybe something with the church across the way. Maybe they were kind enough to let us put parking over there. Maybe yes. we can like, hey, can we live here for four right. months <laughs> or a year or six, you know, whatever it is. All right. Uh, uh, they, they Point that the town of Mount Pleasant, their most recent fire station that went in was a CM at risk, and we would obviously want to be able to evaluate that. And that, that has a lot to do with the current state of affairs of uh, materials and lead times and how we're going to get everything together for the station. I saw another hand. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful, you know. have any dollar amounts at this point. Um, the, the contract with the architect requires them to use a third party cost estimator. So they put the components together and then another uh, objective party calculates, okay, based on the uh, conceptual design, this is about what it would be. And so, so that'll be presented to the commission on the 10th. Is we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. You don't know. What we have no idea what it will cost to build this fire station. Okay, so you're going into a project and you don't have like an idea being inside of this business as long as you guys have that. Well, this uh, ballpark figure, you know, you know, we may be at three million, you know, X Y Z because you've actually seen other fire stations actually built. So when you say that you don't know. tell you what I do I go home and it's sometimes and I think about it right just like that well how much is this fire station going to cost and you know I'm not a contractor I'm not an architect but in my mind as the fire chief and seeing what we spent over on uh, Folly Road I'm thinking 
half of what we spent over there, that might be high, it could be low. So what what am I talking about? I'm talking about, in my mind, and this is just Tom Glick. This ain't the fire chief. Tom Glick, that's my name. I just go, I just go, four million dollars, maybe? Okay. That's kind of like me we had thinking to, about it. We had to bond out for the new station, which is the headquarters, which is three bays. That was eight and a half million. We don't have headquarters and we have two bays. So uh, obviously we're, we're gonna be working through that process. It will be less than eight and a half million dollars. Uh, my last question is, yeah. so when's this built? I'll give an answer. What, no, no, let me just ask this last question. Sure, sure. Okay. My last question is, over what time period for, are we gonna need tax? You know, what they gonna So what we did on the last station was a 30-year uh, general obligation bond. Just very similar to a mortgage. Okay, I'm uh, Just to give you, uh, give you a, an answer to your question about cost. Right now at a conceptual level, we've not done structural engineering. We've done some due diligence. We're in that process. There's a lot of things that impact cost. Does this site require this station to have a deep cloud foundation or standard uh, shallow foundation? Those things all impact cost. But to answer your question, we're building fire stations anywhere between $300 to $550 a square foot. We just finished two stations in Kiowa because they're raised up off the ground. They're not the Taj Mahal. They're nice stations. They were almost $700 a square foot. In this day and age, that's not an unreasonable amount of money given the cost that Dave was saying about materials, those types of things. I would assume on a station this, this size, about 5,000 square feet, we're going to be in between probably $300 to $500 a square foot, depending on some of the other factors that we still have to work out as we get through the design. The other aspect of this, and Dave was saying about whether we did it or I think was asked about CM at risk. Um, when you low bid a job, remember what you're doing. You're asking someone to build the station for the lowest amount of money, but yet you still want the highest quality. You can't really get both of those. So this other method that we've been discussing with the TSE, um, as Dave mentioned, we did kind of Mount Pleasant Station and with CM at risk, is a little different way of bringing on qualified contractors who are selected because they're qualified to build the building. They're hired before we finish the design, so the contractor actually becomes part of the entire team, and we get to bounce ideas off of them about different ways of building things that will still be safe, still look great, but maybe be more cost effective. And the goal is to try and get the station to be the best station it can be, at the best price it can be, at the best value. So sometimes lowest price isn't always the best thing, but in the end, CM at risk gives you a really, we think, a more team approach and competitive approach to pricing and gives you owner more options as they move forward. So hope that answers some of your questions. Well, in, in part, it does. I don't want to take up, you know, the rest of the meeting. I appreciate you guys, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you make me feel safe when I'm uh, asleep. You know, <laughs> Don't forget that anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? No? All right, well, if you did, oh, yes, sir. If I, if I were able to keep my building, how would you alleviate? I know there's a traffic disaster at your site. Is there, is there a plan to put lights on maybe out here or over here? To... So generally what we would do is we would have preemption. So when the cones drop in the station, it controls not only the traffic signal here, but there'll be warning lights up and down the road, really because we're at an intersection probably on three roads that will stop traffic. They'll all get red lights. Unfortunately, people don't really follow the lights. What they see is a big red fire truck with lights blaring, and that's what a lot of times stops them. However, we will do traffic preemption, and that's all tied in with the system that's in the station. When 911 gets a call, uh, or the emergency operations center, or the dispatch gets a call and drops phone, that will impact all of the things. Hey, I have one question. Uh, Oh, yeah. I need I need to get with you uh, because I need to give you a serious code. Okay. Okay. I gave it to one of your men. Okay. He said he would give it to you. 
Trying to make this happen over the next five years. So for like the GIS yeah. system? The, the GeoNet. For, You're talking about geo bonds, right? General, general the bonds. The, the bonds. No, that goes through the commission. So what what we're what we're able to do is bond out up to 8% of the total taxable value. That's the limit we can go to. Okay, so you, there's no oversight of Charles As the commission, yes. Uh, up to that limit. If it goes over that, then there's, you know, referendum where we would have to go to the voters. Is that 8% of the, of the town change on it, or is that 8 The PSD territory. PSD territory. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it's not going to affect Salaries of you guys it should be separated. You guys should not lose. Like when they go, oh, where are we going to find the money for these guys to get their bump? We ain't cutting that. No, we ain't cutting. You guys need to keep up with the cost. You just heard it from the chairperson of the commission <laughs> said we're not cutting no, salaries. Wait, I, wanted it fire fire said. I wanted it out there. <laughs> it definitely needs to be separated. It's recorded. She right. just said it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's an operational millage and right. then there's a debt service right. millage. So well, I, I knew that. I just wanted to make sure everybody. I don't want this. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, and be sure you got your email written on that list over there so you can get updates, please. Thank you very much.